What if I told you in this age of eco-angst, there's a place that dares to just say no to single-use plastics? There is. Sure, the town of Lunenburg may be as old as they come, but it has found a new determination to eliminate single-use plastics. Just try asking for a plastic cup and cover with your latte at number nine coffee bar. No, but I have a mason jar for you. Or a plastic fork with your fish and chips at the fish shack. No plastic forks here. And don't even think about asking for a plastic glass to sample the best of the local distillery Ironworks. Uh -uh. Even a big name chain like Subway is trying to get in on the act. Are you for real? Did you really win a plastic? Or you win a paper bag? There's a movement here. It's all voluntary and it's catching on, one business operator at a time, each doing what they can, according to Teresa Quilty of Plastic Free Lunenburg. We all understand that our community is on the edge of the ocean and we absolutely rely, um, our, our economics rely on um, a clean ocean, clean seafood, uh, a clean environment. Uh, we're a heritage uh, site, a UNESCO World Heritage Site, and so it's really important for us to take care of what's the most important to us. And, um, and so single-use plastics don't really fit with a UNESCO World Heritage Site. Uh, they're a disposable product and we're not a disposable community. Fact is, there's an estimated 8 million tons of plastic that ends up in our oceans every year. Did you know that? Here, they're betting that if you do, you might think twice about using that plastic bag. We actually said we're not going to shame anybody because, uh, because we could start doing that, right, with a shaming approach of, you know, shame on you for, for carrying your plastic bag or whatever it is. Uh, we said we want to be helpful. Um, we actually believe that people want to do the right thing. And if we, um, if we educate people and support them, uh, that they will do the right thing. And um, so far, that's working pretty well for us. You won't find a plastic bag at Julie Senior's Fisherman's Picnic General Store. These are our, um, the town's boomerang bags. How do they work? Um, so what they do is um, people come in and do their grocery shopping. And we'll give them a boomerang bag if they're local. Um, and then they can return it to uh, many of the stores in town. So you pick it up at one store, you do your shopping. You next time you're out, drop it off at another store. You can drop it back in here. So no plastic there. No plastic at all. And the you know a bunch of girls get together in town and make them, and people donate the fabric. It's 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 a really great thing to do. It's the kind of sustainable thinking that explains why you get a paper cup at Lynn McKay's Distillery. It's a process. It's a process, and it's not going to happen overnight. That being said, there's easy stuff like this. This is not a tough move for anyone who's doing any sampling publicly of beverages, whether it be alcohol or non-alcohol, they should be doing it in paper because it's easy, it's right, and here's the kicker, it's cheaper. Coffee cups, you're gonna have trouble finding one. It, it, it doesn't exist yet. No kidding, says coffee bar owner, Sarah Johnston. Well, we're just in the middle of phasing out our cups, so I haven't fully had the impact yet. I'm getting a little bit of pushback, but also a lot of encouragement. So. How do you feel doing it? Um, nervous, but also excited to be making this big change. And the group is pushing things even further by proposing a bylaw to force one of the most comprehensive plastic bans in Canada, eliminating 10 single-use plastics. We believe that we can go so far on uh, a voluntary basis, but let's face it, what we have right now is a voluntary ban. I mean, voluntary doesn't change anything. It means you can do what you want. But here's the hang up. Council put the brakes on, concerned it could be too wide sweeping. It'll consider banning just three products for now. Is there a lesson here as the federal government prepares a national ban? I think one of the lessons that we've learned is, um, is to be open transparent, inclusive, and helpful. And so we have to be patient because not everybody changes at the same pace and not everybody is at the same starting place. And so we are continually bringing people along um, through this journey. No one here is under any illusion that they're single-handedly saving the planet, but they do believe if big change is to happen, it'll take countless small efforts. Tom Murphy, CBC News, Lunenburg. According to one group, our planet goes through 500 billion single-use plastic bags each year. 
That's about 150 for every person. But that backlash is growing. This bag ban is an important step, but it's only a step. In 2020, New York will become the third U.S. state where single-use bags are prohibited at checkout. Hawaii got on board in 2015, though it was passed at the county level. Californians voted for a statewide ban in 2016. Bangladesh was the first country in the world to ban thinner single-use plastic bags in 2002, though reports say that ban was widely ignored. More than a dozen other countries have followed, including New Zealand, China, South Africa, and Sri Lanka. In 2017, Kenya passed what's often called the world's toughest law. People face stiff fines and jail time for making plastic bags, giving them out, or even just using them.